Welcome to Blind Abilities. I'm Jeff Thompson. While attending the National Federation of the Blind Convention 2019 in Las Vegas, Nevada, yes, Sin City, few of us attended the Ira Party. There's quite a few people there, and there was a chance, there was a possibility that you could become one of the people who were selected to get a ride in the autonomous vehicle through Lyft, the rideshare company in Las Vegas, where only in Las Vegas is it possible to operate autonomous vehicles on public streets. Okay, back to the contest. Who's going to be one of the six people that get the opportunity to ride the driverless car, the autonomous vehicle, the BMW Series 3? And mind you, that's a 2018 model. Something that they took right off the floor and then adapted it to autonomity, the autonomous car. Well, I was pretty close. I was sitting next to the gentleman that had a poker chip underneath his chair, so he was selected to get the ride in the autonomous vehicle and experience all the mystery that we've been evaluating and talking about. His name is Michael Colburn. He's a fellow Minnesotan. He's in the Business Enterprise Program and a fellow member of the State Rehab Council here in Minnesota. Well, it was great that he was getting the ride because now I got him in the studio here to talk to him. And he's going to tell us about his ride, the expectations he had, and the end result. But let's slow down just a minute here. We didn't just get Michael Colburn. We also got Liz Botner. She too won the chance to ride in the autonomous vehicle. And we'll talk to her in just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. So without further ado, here's Michael Colburn from Big Snack Vending. Michael, what was it like to know that you were going to be riding in the autonomous vehicle, the driverless car? I was pumped. I bet you were. I was excited. Well, they say exciting things happen in Vegas, right? Well, it was a fun way to cruise across Las Vegas. You think? It's the only place in the United States where autonomous vehicles are legal to be used in a fleet. And thank you, Lyft, for partnering up with Aptiv to make all this possible. And thank you, Ira, for throwing the party and bringing this all together. So, Michael, as you look back... What was it like? I was never nervous. I never felt unsafe. To be honest with you, it was the safest I've ever felt in a vehicle. Wow. It was smooth. That's the best word I can use to describe the experience. I almost felt like I was floating or flying. Really? Well, you were in Vegas, dude. There were never sudden stops or starts. There was no bouncing or jerking. It was just so smooth and so controlled. I appreciate the fact that the company is taking blind individuals opinions into consideration as they develop the technology and move forward so it seems like the possibilities of someone who's blind or visually impaired will be able to operate a autonomous vehicle someday at least it seems to be getting closer i think it's going to be a while before it's a viable option for blind people to use as independent travel I know that the technology will be ready for the marketplace way before the law will. I would be a buyer. I would embrace the technology were it offered to me. So as you approach a vehicle, what was it like thinking, I'm getting in a driverless car? I knew driverless car didn't mean driverless car. I didn't imagine they were going to strap me in a contraption and press a button and I would blast down the road, although I would have been up for that. Hey, while in Vegas, right? Michael, what was inside the car? There were two individuals in the vehicle with us. They were both employees of Aptiv. One of the gentlemen had announced to us that he was an engineer on the project and he was very interested in our feedback. The other gentleman performed the duties as a driver. So they did have drivers in the car, not one, but two. On private property in Las Vegas, you have to have a human being operating the vehicle. On the city streets of Las Vegas, the vehicle can be in the uh, autonomous mode. So the driver behind the steering wheel was just paying attention to the road and what was happening? The driver had his hands on the steering wheel and his feet in the proper position, and he was ready to take over at any point if need be. Yeah, that's always a situation you think about, if need be. The part that I wonder about is when the technology is going to be available to blind people for the fact that at some point, if you still have to operate the vehicle, that, you know, leaves us out. I mean, this is the beginning. This is the first city doing this, Aptiv and Lyft putting this together, I imagine the technology is only going to grow. I imagine ultimately the goal is for all of the vehicles to communicate with one another and with the traffic signals to probably take the human element out of travel. Once that happens, it will be an option for us. 
Yeah, it keeps growing. When you think about traffic control communicating with all the vehicles out there and all the vehicles communicating with each other, it seems like a perfect paradise for transportation. And then when you get the person out there with their own car, you know, the American dream, own your own car, that may be the odd factor that doesn't communicate with everything else. So it seems like it's going to be safer at some point. Actually, I probably would feel safer knowing that the vehicles are all communicating with one another and operating themselves. I don't know that the machines can get distracted. They're not texting and looking at the person next to them or eating a cheeseburger. But meantime, you could be doing all that. It's like being a chauffeur. It's going to change the way we commute. It's exciting. Overall, Michael, it sounds like your time at the IRA party turned out to be a pretty good time. It was a great experience. It was a fun opportunity. I appreciate IRA and Aptiv giving us the opportunity. Well, thank you, Michael Colbrun. Big snack vending. Thanks so much for coming on the Blind Abilities and Sharing. And now we'll hear from Liz Botner. She also got to experience the ride in the autonomous vehicle while in Vegas. And here's her story. Liz, so you got in the car. Then we got in the car and we met the people, the operators of the car. There were two of them, the one in the driver's seat and then the one in the, the front passenger seat. We weren't allowed to take pictures in the car, which I fully understand. But it was just really surreal that as I'm sitting in this car and it's starting to move, that for 98% of the ride, it was not driven by a human. And this car was just driving itself and it did not feel any different than if it were being driven by a human that was the really weird and kind of also surreal part for me like the whole experience was surreal that's the perfect word i think that sums it up for me is surreal but yet it still stopped on its own it still would turn on its own it still counted for things on its own and i, I couldn't really tell visually what was going on there were times when the car would make different alarm noises or status noises and i would ask about those and was told that they were different like status noises to based on i was just kind of living in the moment of I'm riding in the self-driving car. Then when we did get to the hotel, it did have to be piloted by the, the humans because some regulations require that on private property, you can't do a self-driving thing, which I get. Liz, what is your view today of the technology involved with autonomous vehicles after this experience? The technology, I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. There are definitely questions that I still have about it. Let's say I'm in that driver's seat and it's doing what it needs to do, but something happens and it doesn't do something. Is that my fault? Like, whose fault is that? Because I obviously can't see to know what's going on. Right. I mean, do we blame the technology or the driver? Liz, did this experience meet your expectations? As for expectations when I was waiting to get in the car, I honestly don't know that I had any expectations. I I really didn't know what to expect because I'd never... (laughs) I never had an experience like that to compare it to. Like my thought, I guess, was mainly like, this will be interesting. You know, I don't really know what to expect. Part of me was like, is this safe? But obviously it's safe because if it wasn't safe, we wouldn't be doing this. But the general, like, I'm going to be riding in the car without a human driving. Like what? Didn't really have any firm expectations. It was just more like, I have an open mind about this. I have slight reservations because of the fact that I've never done this before and I have no idea how this is going to end up or what it's going to be like. But I am all for this and this is going to be awesome. The moment when I realized that you know, I was in the car and like no human was driving, surprisingly, it wasn't that hard to kind of come to terms with in my mind because everything was happening as it would in terms of the feel of everything as if a human were driving. So it's not like there was this defining moment between like, this feels like a, the human's driving, or and this feels like the car is driving. There was nothing to make me not think that if I didn't know any better, I would think that the human was driving all you know the whole ride. But obviously that wasn't the case because it was a self-driving car. It wasn't really a defining moment when I was like, okay, this what car is driving itself. Just seamless. Maybe there kind of was in the beginning because they weren't like complete separate things. One, the human didn't drive the car first anyway, so there, it wasn't like I could have been like, okay, that's the human versus the self-driving piece. I guess where there was acknowledgement that, okay, this is driven by a, an autonomous thing and not a human, it was like in my brain, like it was a mental realization for me. There wasn't a physical anything, it was all like mental, like putting it all together in my brain and making sense of it. It went from me being outside the car not really knowing what I was going to really be in for, (laughs) but knowing that this car at one point would drive itself because that's obviously what it was supposed to do, to being in the car and having the car drive itself and me somehow being like, you know what, 
this is okay. Like, I really thought, actually, one of the expectations I had was, you know, this is going to be really, really weird, and I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to handle Like, how am I going to wrap my brain around this? Like, how am I going to make sense of this? But really, there wasn't anything to make sense of on a deeper level because it felt the same when the car was driving versus when the human was driving. Like, if I didn't know any better, you could have said the human was driving the whole time, and I'd been like, okay. But obviously, that wasn't the case. The car was driving for most of it. Oh, that's really cool. No difference. I mean, that's what you would expect. How do you feel about autonomous vehicles today? I definitely feel like there is potential more than I did before. I'm not as skeptical of the whole idea that this could never work and I really think that humans should always drive and that should always be what happens. Uh, No, the ride in that car proved to me that this technology is here and it works. It may not be perfect yet, but it works. It's constantly improving and maybe someday down the line it can be more widely used and open up a lot of doors that currently are closed in terms of being able to provide transportation to more people when they need it versus having to wait for other people and be on someone else's schedule. There are still questions that I have. You know, what happens when you know, technology fails? Because technology fails. Yes, that, that does happen. What? No way. Contrary to maybe popular belief, it does happen. Let's say it is more widely used with rideshare services. How, as someone who can't see the vehicle, is there going to be something that's built into either the vehicle or the technology that alerts me that it's there? Because my text message that I usually send out to the driver that says, please let me know when you're here, that, how's that going to work with a self-driving car? Yeah, you'll probably get a robo text right straight from the car. So Liz, it sounds like this experience really had an impact on you. The knowledge I now have is definitely not something I would be able to have if I had not had that experience. Because before that, it was all speculation and I didn't have anything to go by. I don't know about this, but now I have a more positive experience to draw from. Yes, questions still do exist, but and some of them are the same questions that I had before, but others of them are different questions now because of my experience. And I would hope that there could be more of a dialogue as the technology advances and gets more sophisticated and these questions get answered, or even if new questions come up from the manufacturers of the technology, that they reach out to people in various groups that would be potentially using their technology and asking what they think about it and, you know, bringing the questions that they have of those groups to those groups so that there could be a dialogue. Because I think what better time to have that dialogue than now when the technology is still being improved upon and built versus after the fact, later on when it's already here in the form that it would be in. Let's shape this technology together as a community of of riders, all different types of riders. I think that's important. And that definitely would be something that I would love to be a part of to make sure that happens. Well, Liz, it just goes to show you that things happen for those who show up. And now that you showed up there, you have such great takeaway from this experience. I would just really like to thank Ira and Lyft and Active for giving those six of us the opportunity to have that experience because what an amazing experience that is. And it's something that we can share with our networks and kind of promote the positive impact that this technology could have, currently does have, and could in the future have on so many people. That is definitely something that that everyone can benefit from. Thank you, Ira. Thank you, Active. Thank you, Lyft. So good for you, Liz. And thank you so much for coming on The Blind Abilities and sharing this with the listeners. So great of Liz and Mike to come on The Blind Abilities and talk about their experience with autonomous vehicles. And for more podcasts with a blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com, on Twitter at Blind Abilities, and check out our Facebook presence with our page, Blind Abilities, and our groups, Blind Abilities Community, Career Resources for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and That Blind Tech Show. And remember, you can type in Blind Abilities, that's two words, into any of your podcatchers of choice. I want to thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed, and until next time, bye-bye.
When we share what we see through each other's eyes, we can then begin to bridge the gap between the limited expectations and the reality of blind abilities. Of blind abilities. For more podcasts with a blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com, on Twitter at Blind Abilities, download our app from the App Store, Blind Abilities, that's two words, or send us an email at info at blindabilities.com. Thanks for listening.